I have slipped the surly bonds of earth and danced the skies on laughter-silvered wings. Sunward I've climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun-split clouds and done a hundred things you have not dreamed of. Wheeled and soared and swung high in sunlit silence. Hovering there, I've chased the shouting wind along and flung my eager craft through footless halls of air. Up, up the long, delirious burning blue, I've topped the windswept heights with easy grace where never lark nor eagle flew. And while with silent lifting mind I've trod the high and trespass sanctity of space, put out my hand and touched the face of God. When John Gillespie Jr. sang these praises to flying, the Harvard could not have been far from his mind. For to many, the Harvard has been the vessel in which they embarked on a dream. A dream that was shared by thousands since the beginning of time. The dream to conquer Earth's final boundary and touch the face of God. The South African Air Force received its first three Harvard Mark I aircraft direct from a Royal Air Force contract in the early 40s. These aircraft arrived at Durban by sea on the 21st of February 1940, thereby starting the South African Air Force's long association with the Harvard. At the time, South Africa and England entered into a joint air training scheme, wherein South Africa provided land and hangars, and England the training aircraft to enable the training of pilots for the Second World War. For this purpose, South Africa required advanced training aircraft to replace the outdated Hawker Hearts and rather unreliable Miles Masters. A large number of Harvard Mark II A's and Mark III's began arriving in South Africa from late 1942 onwards. By the time hostilities ceased, 633 Harvards had been delivered to the South African Air Force. About half of these were returned to the US, while others found their way to Belgian, Hellenic, Italian and Danish Air Forces. The Netherlands also received some of these aircraft, as did Air France who started a ground technical training section operating four Harvards. A large number of aircraft stayed behind in South Africa, where they continued until 1995 to serve as the standard ab initio training aircraft of the South African Air Force. This versatile trainer has the following specifications. It is powered by a 550 horsepower Pratt & Whitney WASP R1340AN1 engine. It has a mass of 1,941 kilograms when empty and 2,530 kilograms when loaded. Its dimensions are as follows. It has a wingspan of 12.9 meters, a length of 8.53 meters and a height of 3.57 meters. It has a maximum speed of 340 kilometers per hour, a cruising speed of 230 kilometers per hour and a range of 1400 kilometers. A flying training school was established in 1922 at Swartkop Air Force Station. Out of this school, the Central Flying School emerged in 1934. Since its formation, its function has been to train pupil pilots and instructors for the South African Air Force. Over the years, the school has moved to several locations. First to Kimberley, later to Tempe near Bloemfontein, and eventually to Danota, where it turned out pilots in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. It moved to its latest home at Langabahnweg in 1994.
Night flying in winter is something instructors at Donata can still recall vividly. The restricted visibility from the rear cockpit required the instructor to open the canopy to be able to look out, and in the process, he normally got frozen stiff in the biting high felt cold. Over the past five decades, the Harvard earned for itself several nicknames. The most renowned of these is probably Spam Can, or Spammy for short. Spam is the American slang for bacon, and the aircraft were thus named the Spam Can after the tins of bacon supplied by the USA to Britain during World War II. The Texan is another nickname for the Harvard, derived from the factory at Dallas in Texas that built these aircraft during the late 1930s. From Dallas, they were flown to Newark in New Jersey, where they were crated and shipped from New York to Cape Town, Port Elizabeth, and Durban, and assembled at the air depot nearest to the port. More than 10,000 of these trainers were built in the USA and Canada, which is more than any other trainer in the world. Apart from training, Harvards were also used for meteorological flights, target towing, and navigation and bombing training. Its good overall flying characteristics, with positive response to control movements, also made it an excellent aerobatics aircraft. Instructors at CFS Donata first flew Harvards as a formation aerobatics display team in 1949. This display team was active until its disbandment in 1965. The aerobatics team was, however, resurrected in 1986 and has since been a favorite at air shows. The Harvard team comprises of four flying members, a flying safety officer and the team manager. All are qualified instructors at CFS Langebahnweg, but come from different operational flying lines in the South African Air Force. The team leader is responsible for team safety in the air. He plans and executes maneuvers and monitors the speed and height of the formation. The flying safety officer acts as the display team's eyes and ears on the ground during a display. The Harvard has a low power to weight ratio. For this reason, a display begins at 4,500 feet above the ground so that sufficient energy can be built up by the aircraft. 
A Harvard weighs in the vicinity of 5,200 pounds with a single pilot and is driven by a 550 horsepower Pratt & Whitney piston engine. Most of the display maneuvers are conducted at an average speed of 370 kilometers per hour. The Harvard Formation Aerobatics team is internationally renowned for its extremely close formation. With the distance between the propellers and the wingtip of the aircraft a mere 1,2 meters. If you take into consideration that the maximum g-force during such a display is around four and a half, clearly a combination of impeccable airmanship, strict discipline and finely honed pilot skills are prerequisites for being a formation team pilot. Smoke generators are used throughout the show to enhance the visual splendor of this aerial symphony. The Harvard's notorious response to control inputs and power application is similar to that of the C-130 Hercules. It swings to the left when you open power and swings to the right when you close power. Hence the adage, there are two types of Harvard pilots, those who have already done a ground loop and those yet to do one. Harvard 7001 was built from spares in 1990 and sports an impressive burgundy and silver paint scheme. It was named Inquasi, which means fish eagle. The number 7001 symbolizes the first Harvard to serve in the South African Air Force. A world first occurred in South Africa in 1991, when 50 Harvards gathered in diamond formation for the biggest flypast in South African aviation history. The occasion was the Harvard's 50th anniversary of South African Air Force service. This formation was stepped down 45 degrees to enable spectators to see the aircraft to best effect. Harvard number 7111, known as Nelson in the flying inner circle, is the best known Harvard in the South African Air Force and is, since 1987, the number one in the aerobatics team. The oldest Harvard in service in the South African Air Force is Harvard 7012, which arrived in South Africa in November 1942. With a working life of 46 years, this is the oldest aircraft of any type in military service anywhere. In 1962, the weapon-carrying capability of the Harvard was improved. The wing was modified with mountings on both wings for .303 guns. Matra or DOW rocket launchers and bomb racks. The Harvards did a number of short tours in southwest Africa or Namibia and were hastily camouflaged for use in Operation Savannah in 1976. Although they flew armed reconnaissance for Ondongwa, they never crossed the border, their operations being confined to southwest Africa, Namibia. A far-sighted group of individuals formed the Harvard Club in 1989. The aim of this club was to unite all those who shared a common interest in the Harvard. It also strives to preserve the Harvard, which played an indispensable part in the aviation history of our subcontinent. Due to the effort of this club, the National Monuments Commission took the step to preserve 10 Harvards. These aircraft were declared cultural treasures because of the historic and technical importance thereof. These 10 aircraft were allocated to the club, which is contractually bound to hangar them at all times. They must also maintain six in South African Air Force color schemes of the period 1940 to 1995 and represent the South African Air Force and museum whenever they cannot be officially present. Once a hangar can be erected, the aircraft will be based at Heidelberg. In total, 100 Harvards were transferred to CFS Langebahnweg by December 1992. 
Since their arrival, these aircraft continued in their proud tradition of service, excellence and reliability. The time has, however, come to greet the Mr. Chips of the South African Air Force. He will always be fondly remembered as the cradle of many a young pilot's flying dreams. The characteristic rasp of this venerable aircraft will no longer fill the air, nor would the unique spammy cockpit smell fill the lungs of an aspiring pupil pilot. The memories thereof will, however, never cease to fill our hearts. These will, like the legend of the flying schoolmaster, live on forever. The phasing out of the Harvard marked a Rubicon in South African Air Force history. For many, the sadness of saying goodbye to the last of the radials was an extremely personal experience. How do you feel about the Harvard being phased out today? Very sad, very sad. It's the uh, end of a long legend, but they're not dead yet, so long as we keep the Harvard Club flying. Thank you very much. Well, I think as far as I'm concerned, uh, they've done their time, they've done a very good service and what have you. They're making way for new aircraft, which uh, will come in onto the line now, and I think it's a good thing that other people can have a chance of buying one of these. The weekend of the 16th to the 18th of November 1995 marked the official last days of our acquaintance with this much-loved aircraft. From across the country, and in some cases from across the globe, faithful Harvard fans gathered at Central Flying School, Langebahnweg, for the official farewell ceremonies held in honor of this reliable workhorse. Friday the 17th saw the commencement of the air show, which was basically an aerial celebration of the Harvard's term of service. Shortly before midday, a formation fly-past of Harvard's wrote 75 in the skies above Langebahnweg. This was followed by a display done by an albatross, whereafter a 55 formation fly-past of Harvard's filled the skies. An impressive show by the Shackleton followed. 
during which this retired lady of the skies proved that she could still be put through her paces. A jewel of a 16-ship diamond formation followed the shack's remarkable show. After lunch, it was the turn of the Harvard aerobatics team, under the command of Major Jake Fenter, to treat fans to a superb performance. Major Fenter led his team out onto the runway, honoring tradition by piloting Harvard 7111, the notorious Nelson. His teammates followed in Harvard's 7176, 7153, and 7385. Major Lionel Sawyer and captains Anton Kusner and Andre Mehring followed their leader into the blue and did what they do best, better than ever before. It was a sad day for all to realize that this was their last air show featuring the Harvard aerobatics team. An almost respectful silence fell on the crowd when the team's final call for smoke was announced. Next up was the so-called Springbok formation, consisting of the DC-3 Dakota and the Junkers JU-52 from SAA Historic Flight, and two Harvards, one from the Harvard Club of South Africa and the other belonging to the SAA Historic Flight. The moment everyone had waited for finally arrived when the 55 Harvards that took part in the massive 55-ship formation started to take off. The cream of the crop in South African Air Force aviation flew in this formation, which was simply breathtaking. This formation was done in commemoration of the Harvards' 55 years of excellent service and was led by Lieutenant Colonel Henny Lowe, chief instructor at Central Flying School Langebahnweg. After the aircraft were airborne, Chief of the Air Force arrived and a military ceremony followed. After the general salute, all eyes were fixed on the approaching 55-ship formation. Sharing the wind with Frank Sinatra's moving version of I Did It My Way, the formation glided past to perfection. Emotions overflowed as mutual goodbyes were said for the last time. The Harvards touched down one after the other, while the aerobatics team took their time saying goodbye with what would later be described as the best Harvard aerobatics display in South African Air Force history. Lined up, facing the emotional crowd, 55 Pratt & Whitney engines roared up in a chilling salute to the end of an era. Man and machine both fell quiet after the mass simultaneous shutdown. In this quiet sanctity, Chief of the Air Force, Lieutenant General Creel, marched up to the old schoolmasters of the skies and placed a wreath over the propeller of number 7667. The crowd then dispersed and gathered again at the security gate for the unveiling of Harvard 7449 as gate guard. The farewell activities were ended off on Friday evening when guests gathered inside number four hangar for a lucky draw and the auctioning of paintings and memorabilia. At the conclusion of this, it was showtime in four hangar when a concert was held in honor of the Harvard. Saying goodbye is never easy. It almost always entails parting with a part of one's soul. We are saying goodbye to a part of our past, but it is without despair that we do so. For we are on a quest to the top and must therefore embrace changes and accept them as challenges to create a better future for us all. The legacy of the Harvard brought us to the doorstep of this future.
salutes the men who were captured by the drone of mine cylinders. We salute the ground crew who for years toiled to keep our aircraft in top condition. We salute the instructors, the pilot makers. We salute all those who flew in her. We salute the South African Air Force, the last to fly her. And as she leaves us, we salute the Harvard, the last of the radials.